What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be going over how to create the Jordan 2. This is the second part of the series that we'll be doing. We'll be modeling each Jordan step-by-step -step tutorials for you guys to follow along. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. All right, so the first thing you could do is we have the basic sole outline. Now, if you don't know what I did here, just go ahead and watch Jordan 1 and you'll see the basic process. All right, so what I did is just model out the base of the sole. And then now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of thickness so that when we're adding our modifiers to it, nothing is collapsing or anything like that. All right, so just sizing this down and adding some loop cuts to sharpen up those edges. Now, once we have the edges sharp, we also want to go on the side view and make sure that those sides are sharp also. Because what happens is the subdivision collapse everything down and makes it super smooth. And that's what we don't want for certain parts. Now, since this is the second Jordan compared to the first one, it was a little complicated with the sole because we have more details. So the way I went about this is just going ahead and cutting out certain pieces and insetting it. Now, after we inset, we're going to go ahead and take the knife tool and just make those cuts. Now, in Jordan 3, 4, 5, and 6, I did discover a new technique. It's not new to the industry, but it is new to me, which will make this process much simpler. But for this tutorial and these length of these tutorials from 1 to all the way to 14, we'll be going over many different processes so one process here is actually just cutting i know it takes time but this is how you get a more precision with your soul there's not really a quick and easy way that i found to do it i know there's multiple people who use the pl displacement maps to get the the bump of the actual shoe that is a quick and easy way but if you want to just model everything now this is the way to go cutting and projecting now, once we got everything set, we want to make sure that all the cuts are good going down the line and making sure that they align with everything. Now, it's important to make sure that these cuts are near perfect because we're going to have to extrude these. And once we extrude them, it's very hard to make additional edits to it. Now, you can see for the circle pattern, what I did was take the outline and just inset it inside and delete the outside part. So with the inset, because it's not a perfect circle, what we have to do is inset it and then delete the other side. Now, this is me just taking a circle so that it's more perfect. And then now what I'm going to do is take the outer ring and align it to the other one so we can start filling it in. There you go. Now you want to fill it in. And sometimes there's a lot of mismatch. So you have to go back and delete a couple points so that everything flows together. Now, when you're hitting shift and holding on the lines with the two lines selected if you hit f shortcut you should get a filled plane there you go now the faces are filled and now we got this points right here all we're going to do is just extrude a couple points out and then hit them what we're going to do is continue to use the knife tool to cut out the remaining of the sole as you can see this is just a simple simple cuts nothing fancy just takes a little time to get it done there we go we want to hit this side also all right there we go just want to move these points make sure they're good all right now for the part that everyone's been waiting for now once you got all your cuts now what you want to do is go ahead and select them one by one and make sure that you're selecting everything now, it's very important that you select everything because once you extrude it, it's very hard to make sure that everything is leveled. So it's best if you select all your cuts all at once and you extrude it all at once so there is no inconsistency with your extrusion. So if we go ahead and rotate our model, you can see that everything is selected. Now, what we're going to do is just extrude it up a little bit. Now, you should get something that looks like this. All right, perfect. Now with the sole complete, let's go ahead and work on that midsole. So the same concept that we use for the bottom of the sole with some subdivisions, you wanna tighten that up. Now, once we got that set, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate the top of the midsole and extrude it up. Now, what you see that I'm doing here is just bringing those points down so that we can make the mesh of the upper. There you go. So once you got that, 
and just extrude them up or just drag them up to the best of your ability and then you want to take these perfect now once you got that what i did is just go ahead and select it now you can see that it looks extremely funny so what i like to do is just go ahead in my scope and just go ahead and scope out the the form of the shoe now there's multiple ways that you can do this but this is the way that i like to do it because it gives me more flexibility and it also looks more organic because you got those dents you got those imperfections there we go we're gonna use the grab tool the flatten tool to flatten that toe box out all right there you go we're getting closer to a result that we want there you go adding a couple imperfections looking at the back of the shoe looking at the front of the shoe now once we got that all complete now we want to go ahead and start working on the paneling now this is why i extrude up the vertices and create that base shape and scope it out now all i have to do is just snap my faces onto the mesh and everything is exactly where i need it to be so we create a plane and now we want to snap this plane on to the geometry to create the panel now this process is very simple you're literally just taking a plane and moving up the vertices so that they match the contour of the actual shoe now what i like to do is to extend it as far as i can and just add a couple loop cuts in between and uh, make adjustments that way now this is a very important thing that you must keep in mind your topology now even though you might get the shape correct it's always important to have good topology so when we're texturing and also in animation too there we go just moving these along now let's go ahead and extrude this point out so sometimes in order to get that very very tight what can i say decline put those points very close and add another loop cut now this is how the paneling should look when it's done we got a couple modifiers so the first modifier we got in the stack is a subdivision then a shrink wrap and then a solidify the reason we have it in that order is because we with the subdivision we have more vertices in order to stick on the geometry and form to the scope that we have there you go and sometimes it's good to also move around your stack to see what kind of designs you get that you're going to run into is how these things are laying on top of each other so usually what i like to do is with a combination of the sculpting and pushing and pulling with the proportional editing you can get that laying how you want it as you can see i'm doing right now now you don't want it to intersect with the base mesh of the scope and you don't want it to overlap with the other pieces now there you go once we got those other pieces complete it's just about copying whatever points we need so that we don't have to do extra work there we go now once we got that they screwed that out put a little bend to it all right perfect right there now you can see just cleaning up everything that we need just scooting it out making sure we have equal topology slide that over now sometimes you do get things like this where it looks a little crazy what you need to do is just recalculate your normals because what the issue was that we had extra points, we connected them, we created new faces, but they were in the opposite direction of each other. Now, there you go, adding a couple of loop cuts to make these points a little sharper so that they fit better together. All right. All right, so this is what I meant by stealing from the other geometry that you have. So we're gonna take these panels right here and all we're gonna do is extrude it out for the toe box. All right, so let's go ahead and extrude it. Like I said, I like to extrude it to the furthest most point and then just add a couple of loop cuts in between and just form it to how I want it. So once we got those loop cups in, what we wanna do is just go ahead and even out the geometries, select all of them, slide them up, hit all of them, hit GG, and you're good. All right, so I took a piece from the panel and what we're going to do is just go ahead and extrude it out so we can get that cushion of the upper most part of the shoe. 
All right, so the good this is the good thing about sculpting your shoe. Now, you don't really have to worry about or really change your perspective too much because you know that it's accurate in 3D because you're snapping each point on to your sculpted surface. So now we just want to add a couple loop cuts to make sure that our geometry is tight because we are going to be using a subdivision shrink wrap and a solidifier and also that's another reason why we want to steal the geometry from each other because the modifier stacks is already placed where we need them to be now this took a little work to look good so sometimes just, that just means adding a couple more loop cuts and moving your vertices around till you get the desired shape all we gotta do is just select them piece by piece the reason why we do them piece by piece is because it's not necessarily flat so if you select the back piece and the front piece and the middle piece and you smash it on with a snap, those back pieces are actually going to be skewed because of the direction that it's looking at. So what you want to do piece by piece, just snap it onto the surface to get a clean wrap around the scope. So once we got that, we want to turn on our modifiers and see what we're missing. All right, so you can see right here that we just need a little bit more geometry so that it's not peeking through the other one. So once we got that first piece done, we select, we duplicate it and mirror it on the X and do the same process of snapping it piece by piece. We can't let our base scope go to waste. So what we're going to do is just delete part of the mesh and leave this part that is exposed so that we can use it. Now, once we got that, we wanna go ahead and start making where we're gonna keep our laces just go ahead and extrude it out. There we go. Now we also want to make sure that everything is lining up exactly how we want it. And make sure you're using the snapping so that it's actually snapping on to the sculpting. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and connect the back. This is the part of the mirror. Every part that you mirror, if it's connecting in the back, you're going to have to go ahead and fill those polygons in. With our back section filled, let's go ahead and work. Let's go ahead and work on the part of the Jordan, which is has that iconic Nike sign in the back. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and select a few of them. After we selected them and we're going to go ahead and separate it so that it's its own object. Now, once we got it selected, there's still a little bit more work that we need to do. So with proportional editing on and snapping on, we're going to go ahead and adjust it to the side view with that piece done let's go ahead and continue working on that back piece so what i'm doing is just creating a more simplified version and just extruding and making some cuts so that they fit perfectly together because that's one issue that you will constantly run into when making sneakers is that proximity between each panel so the closer you can get it, the tighter it is, the better and more realistic it looks. So let's go ahead and select this, make it its own thing. And now we've got to go ahead and extrude this down and make sure that it's fitting with the rest of the shoe. Let's go ahead and bring these points down, because if you actually look in the back, it's more of a diamond shape than anything. All right, so let's go ahead and adjust these back pieces. So what we want is that diamond shape to be in the back and our back piece to be a little bit out. So let's go ahead and bring these down. There we go. Just adjust them a little bit. All right, perfect. So now you can see that it's not really intersecting anymore. All right, so now let's go ahead and work on these ridges. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off our modifiers and we're gonna go ahead and just slide these over like that and make sure that they're straight. Now, the reason we want them straight is because we actually need to take this full line going across and rotate it just a little bit so that it's angled correctly with those ridges. So there we go, just take them one by one Make sure they're rotated. So you wanna select them, hit the zero. Once we got everything lined up with our reference image, what we wanna do is go ahead, just go ahead and select them, bubble them a, just a little bit and add a loop cut 
and then we're gonna take these the loop cuts that we made in the middle of these bevels and just move them up just a little bit up until they're matching the reference and now we have those ridges that you see we want to add a couple loop cuts so now everything is tight and then now this is where i just do the final tweaks and just take my scope brush push the mesh in just a little bit so that nothing is intersecting with each other so as you can see right here also just taking it in doing it little by little so we're not moving the whole entire mesh and also pulling these out so that it's on top there we go right there perfect Okay, so we're going to continue this until we have everything looking pristine. Done your scope and everything, you should have something similar to this. So it's always a good practice to always look at your model and see, okay, where can I tweak it just a little bit more so that everything is cohesive together? Because the whole idea is to make a realistic shoot. And that means that each piece of the panel is actually either glued together or stitched together. Now, once we're done with our scope and everything is meshed together perfectly how we want it, let's go ahead and adjust the laces. Now, in order to do the laces, I went through a couple things. I copied and pasted this one. I just ended up using a curve with a mesh, and that's how we did it. To make the shapes of the actual lace list that will be looping our laces through we just want to start off with a simple simple circle now we're going to go ahead and rotate this circle and we're going to extrude it up we're going to take this circle and scale it up and we're just going to delete the bottom faces there we go and want to inset this just a little bit now you can see our inset was a little funny Let's go ahead and delete that middle piece and add a subdivision and solidify modifier. There we go. We don't want it too thick. Right there is good. Once we got the base shape complete, Let's go ahead and start anchoring these down so that they are connecting with our laces. With the laces complete, let's go ahead and start working on this back tab of the Nike. It's a very simple process. We're gonna go ahead and take a cube, We're gonna go ahead and take a plane and just extrude it out to match out the Nike sign. All right, so once we got our plane selected, we're gonna go ahead and scale it down and just put it over the Nike sign. Now I just move that over, extrude it out. For the corners, you need an angle. There you go. Now the Nike sign isn't a perfect rectangle, so we just gotta add a couple loop cuts and push some down and push some up to get that angle that we need. There we go, just connect that. Now for the Nikes, for the actual Nike part, we're just gonna duplicate that piece, cover the whole letter, gonna cover the whole thing and just add a couple cuts. that and merge that together once we got that all cut out let's go ahead and size it down and with using the snap tool we're going to snap it on the back and make sure that all the points are correct now once we got the snapping complete let's go ahead and add our solidify modifier to give some thickness now what we're going to be doing is just scaling down that plane and just getting each part of it 
Now, it's actually very, very simple to get the wing part. Now, you just want to extrude this out all the way fully right there through that point. And then what we're going to do is just extrude the sides. Add a couple loop cuts, a couple points. Don't worry about if it's pointy. We're going to come back and smooth that over. Take this side. There we go. And then we're going to scale these down. We're going to move these points down. So now you can see in the picture that it's asymmetrical. So there you go. And then once we complete this, same thing we did with the back tab, we need to go ahead and edit mode, select all of our points and snap it to the face. Go ahead and snap it to the tongue. We're going to go ahead and. So once we got it snapped, what we want to do is just go ahead and play with the thickness till it's a little bit thick right there and add a subdivision so it's a little smoothed out also. So with that final piece done, that completes our whole modeling of the Jordan 2. Now, let me know in the comment section below if you learned anything new and what shoes other than this Jordan series do you guys want to learn? So as you can see, one thing that I do after I'm done modeling everything, I make sure that everything is cohesive. Everything is sticking well together. There's no parts that are sticking out. There's no parts that is hanging out. So this is a good check. I always like to go into my render pass and turn on ambient inclusion because with ambient inclusion, you can see all the cracks, all the imperfections. You can see if there's any gaps in your model. Now, this is very good before you export it out to make sure that you do this because you don't want to go throughout everything and then realize that, hey, there's a gap in the shoe. All right, so this is just comparing our Jordan 1 to our Jordan 2. And one last thing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, you guys, have a blessed day.